Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. We've got some important um, announcements, we've first got of all. A lot of things to share. So, firstly, thank you because this is the very last uh, talk of a two week tour, uh, sharing the Dhamma and bringing so many people, hopefully, some inspiration. This is solid. And for me tonight, as I'm sure for everybody, it's been very powerful. I'm very sorry about the sound. I thought we were going to get sound, <laughs> microphones, but hopefully, you managed to pick up at least the energy and the compassion and some of the piece, and uh, everything has been recorded, so you can watch it again. But I want to express my really heartfelt gratitude, which I can never do in words, to my wonderful teacher, Kalyanamitta Ajahn Brahm, for being a true example of peace, virtue, and compassion. And, um, well, I have no words to say more than that, but also for helping with this project that Ajahn Brahm comes over for. He's trying to help create a monastery for fully ordained nuns. I'm the only one in England at the moment, and uh, sometimes that's a bit lonely. But the bigger purpose of this place is to have a spiritual sanctuary for people just like everybody here, that we can be together, that we can learn together, we can grow together, we can practice kindness and compassion. Whatever religion you come from, whatever you're going through, and to have that communication, you know, whereby we can share the difficulties we experience in our life and realize that we're not alone. So the spiritual friendship and community, the Buddha said, was the whole of the spiritual life. So that's not just for monastics, that's for everybody. Um, without somebody to teach us the Dhamma, and in this case we're very fortunate to have Ajahn Brahm, while well, you're still around, or very round. I'm always around. <laughs> <allowed. laughs> Uh, without that, we can't actually practice because we do need some new conditioning in our mind. Otherwise, we're just rolling in our own patterns again and again. So it's really this seed that we need from the Buddha and passed down through the generations and through the monastic Sangha. So this is what we're trying to do to create more um, fully ordained, fully trained and deeply practiced monastics because... <coughs> This is how the Dhamma continues. Of course, lay people too can be a part of that, and you can grow, and you can teach as well. But we do need people who commit their whole lives to it, and I think you can see the difference that it makes when you hear the Dhamma from somebody who's perfected their sila and has developed deep peace and deep wisdom. So this is what we're trying to do, and these talks are a part of that. Um, but we also have news on that front that we are close to finding it. Well, we actually found a suitable property, really beautiful in Oxford, in the countryside, but very close to the city. And uh, for the last few days, the reason we're both pretty tired now is we've been really trying to bring conditions together to, to procure that place. And we're still looking for more donations and maybe loans because it's a bit of a stretch. But we have a property to sell in Oxford the place I'm living now, it's a small vihara, four bedroom, terrace house. Um, and with the money from that, we could buy this place, but we the agent won't wait. So if we want to do this, we need help. And for anyone who wishes to make it come true, to, um, to be involved in whatever way you can. You know, It doesn't have to be monetarily, but it can be just by lending your emotional, spiritual support or volunteering with us, whatever. Uh, you feel called to do. So I wanted to let Ajahn say a few words because you came yeah. to see that place with me. It was very uh, unexpected, but it all kind of came together. We went together to see this place. and uh, This is a else. monastery especially for women. There are many Buddhist monasteries for men. How many do you know are especially for women, for bhikkhunis, for equity? It was about 13, 14 years ago I did the first ordination over in Australia for bhikkhunis, got into big trouble with that, something I'm very proud of. I am rebellious, as you know, I said that already, but it's something which needed to be done. The next stage is to have a place where they can practice and live just like the monks can do so. So I bust my butt trying to do all of this. So now I ask each one of you, if you can, if you want to make a donation for the, the new Wihara, the forms are outside. Uh, I think the loans, I think we're going to get some loans oh, yeah. from Perth. You know, I'll 
that's committee meeting on Sunday, so I'll talk all the committee members into, look, we've got money in the bank there, just send it over to UK, and this is a loan, but we're not going to sort of hassle you to get it back. Let's see if no, I... No, we'll yeah, I know, but if that was me. I know. So if any of you want to do something good and see something for women in the future here, equity. How many Buddhist monks have you seen here in UK? How many Buddhist women have you seen? They're not fully ordained though. The, the thing is with the ordination, yeah. it's not about status, it's the opposite, it's renunciation. Mm. But what the full ordination enables us to do is live according to the training the Buddha laid out, and that includes developing our own monasteries and ordaining our own nuns, having leadership, having uh, autonomy to develop places that suit the female way of doing things as well, not only to be under the control of the monks, because quite frankly that is the situation at the moment. You know, everything is there. The, the monks basically call the shots. Is that fair to say? It's yes. It's controversial, but the nuns are basically true. only novices officially, and that means they can't develop their own communities. As a fully ordained nun, we can ordain our own community members, our own bikinis, and train them from scratch. So this gives a lot more um, empowerment to women, but also um, just an ability to, to do things a different way, because the same old models don't work always. We need variety, we need diversity, we need inclusivity, yes? So, I mean, one of the things I think being a bikuni helps with is understanding a little bit how it feels to be marginalized, mainly around gender, but gender in religion. But I know that many people here will feel marginalized or discriminated against due to race or due to their sexuality or due to their gender identity. And I don't want to recreate that. I want a place where people can feel empowered and people can feel respected for who they are and able to flourish in the ways that feel natural to them. So there is a difference there. Um, and I think women deserve a choice. How would you feel if you could only ever be like a junior doctor, never a full-fledged doctor, an assistant teacher, never a teacher? We're missing out on the wisdom of women. The wisdom is very deep, you know? How do we even know yet? We haven't even been given a chance. So this is what we're trying to do. And I am very passionate about that. I always have been, always will be. The things which I just cannot teach. Just the wisdom, the experience of a monk is not the same as the experience of a woman. In the time of the Buddha, they had great nuns, amazing teachers of meditation, fully enlightened. I want to make that, op that possible here in UK. This is where I was born. I feel I've not done my duty to my... In Australia? Oh, in Australia we've got it, yes. Yeah, yeah. It, we've got great monasteries in Australia, fully ordained women there, but nothing in UK. So, this, is, this is not of my birth. No, many people yeah. don't want you to move, so... Just yeah, okay. Say, keep in touch and also look at our online programs. We have sitter discussions every Friday and meta meditation and lots of other teachings happening uh, around England. So even in Ajahn Brahm's absence, <laughs> even though we teaching goes on, uh, there will still be yeah. a lot to bring us together. So please take care, yeah. everybody, and uh, we'll see you next time.